Hey guys, this video is um, in correspondence with your power relationships module. Okay, so I want to talk about different types of loads and the types of power that it produces. So we're going to start with the in-phase resistive loads. So examples of resistive loads are your convenience receptacles, your heating loads, um, incandescent lighting. And what I mean when I say that they're in phase means that the current and voltage are, are peaking and rising at the same rate, okay? So here I have a 10 ohm resistor, my supply across the resistor, 120 volts, 60 hertz. So I wanna talk about the type of power that it produces, but first of all, I wanna talk about the impedance. So impedance triangle is what we use to build a power triangle, okay? So my impedance triangle for an in phase resistive load is simply this, not much of a triangle at all. It's a straight line. And what it's referencing is similar to the reference of zero in a phaser, okay? So it is, this is its complete right angle triangle. It's a straight line. So in phase loads have a power factor of one at zero degrees, indicating current and voltage relationship is in phase, okay? So the resistance of my resistor is 10 ohms. That is my impedance, okay? So in a purely resistive circuit, you can replace impedance with resistance total. So let's figure out the current. So that's just the Z. So 120 volts, divide that now by 10, gives me 12 amps of current. Okay, so if I want to solve my power or create a power triangle for this resistive load, I would draw a triangle just the same as I did for my impedance triangle, straight. So whatever the power factor is for a, an impedance triangle would be the same power factor for your power triangle. Okay, so power factor of one at zero degrees for my impedance triangle will be a power factor of one at zero degrees for my power triangle. Okay, so I wanna figure out how much power is being dissipated from a resistor. So dissipated keyword being it's a heat, a variable of heat, which is what is produced from an in-phase resistive load. This is known as true power, okay? True power is measured in watts. So if I want to figure out how many watts are dissipated from this resistor, I use my I squared R formula, okay? So P equals I squared times R. My I is 12 amps. We just figured that out with our impedance triangle. So 12 squared times 10 ohms. And that gives me, I'm just going to double check my math on everything because I met, I just did this video before and mucked it up. So 12 squared times 10 ohms, 1440, okay? So 14, 1440 watts of true power is what's produced in an in-phase load, a power factor of one at zero degrees, okay? So if I have uh, a purely resistive loads, it means that my true power equals my apparent power. Apparent power is the total vectoral sum of all power that's produced in a circuit, therefore they are equal, okay? So um, this is what a resistive load produces in terms of power using our I squared R formula, okay? Next I wanna talk about an inductor. So resistive loads, true power, power factor one at zero degrees. Inductive. Okay, so um, in our previous module when we talked about inductors, we talked about them in the reference of being pure. So that is theoretical. It's not realistic to have a pure inductor because an inductor is created out of many turns of a copper conduct or a copper wire that has a variable of resistance in it. So I'm going to use an example of an inductor that has a component of resistance in it. So the symbol for an inductor is this, resistor inductor, okay? 120 volts is gonna be my supply. I'm gonna have resistance in the coil of 10 ohms and my XL is going to be 25 ohms, okay? I wanna talk about the type of power that's being produced from an inductive circuit, okay? So I'm gonna start with my impedance triangle because everything comes from there. 
I don't know how much current is flowing in this circuit. I have to figure that out first. And the only way to find the current is to solve for the impedance. So my impedance triangle will look like this. So different than the resistive loads, I have two variables or two different types of loads contained within my inductor. My inductor has a resistive component as well as an inductive component. So I'm going to actually have a full right angle triangle. Okay, so the bottom of my impedance triangle will be the resistive portion, again, at zero degrees. The resistive portion is considered my in-phase portion of my inductor. So R coil equals 10 ohms, okay? Then the inductive reactance you can see is 90 degrees out of phase with your resistive portion. That is your XL. So that would be the 25, okay? To find the impedance of the circuit, we have to get the vectoral sum of my resistive component added to my inductive component, okay? And that will give me, using my Pythagorean, my impedance of the circuit, total opposition. So 10 squared plus 25 squared equals, then the square root of that, 26.93 ohms. Okay. So I have now my impedance, I can figure my current. So I total equals 120 volt divided by impedance, 26.93 ohms, and that gives me a current draw of, 4.46 amps. Okay, so I want to figure out the power that's being produced from this inductor. Okay, so my power triangle, like my impedance triangle, will be a full triangle. It has a resistive component, therefore it has a true power component. It has an inductive component, so it has a reactive component. Okay, so your uh, resistive component produces true power. Okay. The inductive portion produces power known as reactive power. Okay. So induct inductive power is also known as reactive power. Reactive power. The symbol for reactive power is Q. So that's from the inductive portion, the XL. And the unit of measurement for reactive power is VARS, okay? Volt amps reactive, okay? So for me to figure out, so that would be my Q, and then the vectoral sum of these two powers is known as your apparent power. And I'll come back to that in a moment as well, okay? So I want to figure out how much true power is being produced in this inductive circuit. I'm going to go back to my P equals I squared R, okay? My current is 4.46 amps squared times 10 ohms, the resistive part. So this is how much true power will be dissipated from the resistive portion of this coil, okay? 4.46 squared times 10 equals 198.5. 9.2 true power watts, okay? So that would be the bottom part of my power triangle, 198.92 watts, okay? So just like we did in our, in our resistor, we do in the resistive component of our inductor. So now I wanna find the inductive power, I wanna find my reactive power. We're going to use the same formula, but instead of R, we're gonna replace that with XL. Okay, so Q total equals I squared times XL. Again, 4.46 amps squared is my current times 25 ohms will give me my reactive power. So 4.46 squared times 25. Whoa, <laughs> that is not right. 4.46 squared times 25 equals 497.29 vars. Okay, so that goes on the 90 degrees from my in-phase portion, right? Because an inductor makes your current lag by 90 degrees, so it goes over here. 497.29 vars. Okay, so we're all clear with that. Now I want to talk about apparent power. So I need some room here. Okay, apparent power.
current power. Apparent power is the vectorial sum of true power and reactive power. And reactive power. So this part of the, re of the inductor, the resistive component, is dissipating 198.92 watts. This inductive component is dissipating 497.29 bars that are out of phase with the true power. So we can't add them together. They're out of phase and they're on like variables. But if we add them together vectorally, so using our Pythagorean, we can solve for apparent power. Apparent power symbol is S. And the unit of measurement is VA. So let's get the vectorial sum, and then I want to show you the um, formulas we could also use. So there's multiple ways a lot of times to solve for unknown variables depending on what's given in the circuit. So let's do the vectorial sum of true power and reactive power, okay? So we're going to go 198.92 squared plus 497.29 squared equals, and then I'll get the square root of that and it gives me 535.6 VA. Okay, so um, apparent power is the vectorial sum of true power and reactive power. Is there another way I could find the amount of true power? Absolutely. Again, this is the uh, true power in phase portion. This is 90 degrees lagging inductive portion. Okay, so therefore, if I take the, the supply, my voltage, and my current, I can also find apparent power. S total equals V times I. 120 volts is the value of voltage across the entire circuit times the current, the 4.46. And that should equal the vectorial sum, very close. And if it doesn't work, I'm out of here. 535.2, really close. So my whole number is right, I'm off by 0.2 of a VA, which is indicating that it's correct. 120 volts times 4.46 works out to be 535.2 VA. So you can see that V I, um, ST equals V times I was formerly your power triangle back in first, or your power, or your power formula back in first year, but we can't use uh, e times I to find the power anymore because it's in series with the inductive portion. So it doesn't give me power anymore. It gives me apparent power. We're dealing with AC and we're dealing with loads that take my current and voltage and knock them out of phase. Okay. So um, I can find my true power or my apparent power this way. I can also use my uh, I squared R, but replacing it with impedance to find it as well, okay? So apparent power equals I squared, replacing R with Z, which is your total opposition. That should also give us this number, okay? So 4.46 amps squared times 26.93 ohms. Okay, so 4.46 squared times 26.93 equals, look at that, 535.6 VA, okay? So these are all different ways that you can find the apparent power of an AC circuit that's incorporating um, in phase and out of phase loads, okay? So I wanna take a second now to talk about power factors. So in my resistive load, I told you that my power factor was uh, one at zero degrees. So let's just look at the power factor of my power triangle. So what is the formula for power factor? Power factor equals P over S. True power over apparent power, okay? So my power is 198.92 watts. Divide that 
by my parent power, ooh, almost made a mistake, 535.6 VA, and that will give me my power factor. 198.92 divided by 535.6 equals a power factor of 0.371. And if I want to know what the angle is, I'd arc cos at 68.198 degrees. So that is the relationship between 120 volts and 4.46, right? I'm lagging because it's inductive. That references Eli, right? The relationship between current and voltage in an inductive circuit, current is lagging voltage and it's lagging by 68.198 degrees because these two variables are out of phase with each other. Okay, so I also said in my resistive example that whatever the power factor of my power triangle would match the power factor of my other triangle, and it would. So if you were to go with your impedance or your impedance triangle, you would simply see that this is a right angle triangle. This would be your adjacent, this would be your opposite, and this would be your hypotenuse. Cosine is also a power factor. A over H, right? So you would go, so my adjacent is 10 ohms, divide that by 26.93 ohms, and we would get an expected power factor of the same. 10 divided by 26.93 equals, there you go, 0 0.371, okay? So whatever the power factor of your power triangle will be the same power factor of your impedance triangle, okay? last load. I know it's a lot of information. I'm going a little further just so in hopes that it'll make more sense when we get into our RLCs. Okay. So um, the next load I'm going to talk about is capacitive load. So a capacitive load, again, theoretically, you will see them alone. Realistically, you will not. Okay. You won't see capacitors unless it's in a relationship to another load. But for all intents and purposes, we're gonna look at this. I have a capacitive reactance of, I'm gonna say 15 ohms. 120 volts is applied, okay? I wanna figure out my, or draw my impedance triangle because that'll allow me to solve for the current of the circuit. So impedance triangle for a capacitor is going to be a straight line just like that, okay? So it doesn't have any resistive components. It only has capacitive reactants. Therefore, this is my right angle triangle, okay? So I have an XC of 15 ohms. Therefore, XC equals my impedance, okay? So I can now apply that value to my current formula. I total equals 120 volts divided by 15 ohms and that gives me a current of 8 amps. Okay, so I want to figure out my power triangle. Again, whatever your impedance triangle looks like, your power triangle is going to look the same. Whatever power factor your impedance triangle is, power factor will be the same. We'll look at that in a second. So what type of power does a... Um, an in, or a capacitor produce exactly the same as an inductor, just 180 degrees out of phase from the inductive bars. So it still produces quadrature power. Okay, quadrature power, reactive power, unit of measurement is bars. Okay, and the formula is going to be Q equals I squared XC, or in this case, you can also go Q equals V times I, because it's the only component in the circuit, so therefore Q equals S, meaning reactive power equals apparent power. 
So I could use any of these formulas here to figure out how much, how many reactive vars are being produced, okay? So I'm gonna go I squared R to start, eight squared times 15 ohms, that gives me 960 vars, okay? I'm just gonna verify that volts times current would work. 120 times eight, 960, okay? Um, so how many reactive vars that are 90 degrees because it's capacitive, the reference is going to be ice. The relationship between current and voltage, current is now going to lead by 90 degrees, okay? And it's um, producing reactive vars. There are no true power being produced in a, capa a purely capacitive circuit, okay? So power factor, what's the power factor? P over S. Okay, so there is no power, and my Q equals my S, right? So that's going to be 0 divided by 960. So that gives me a power factor of 0 at 90 degrees. And that's entailing the reference between current and voltage. So when you have a capacitor in a circuit, it is taking the current and knocking it out of phase by a 90 degrees lag. Simple. See you guys on Thursday.